this section of the video highlights some of the proposed changes made for this particular device. This spring here, as um, was noted in the still photograph, is not normally positioned like this. However, that particular positioning as it comes from the factory is such that it seems to produce a large amount of restriction or force on this pin in order to get it to work. When it's rotated in this position, it appears to be much freer. The cap that goes with this that normally is positioned when you get this in from the uh, distributor has a small channel that is this area here. And when this spring is in its normal or the position that comes from the factory, this spring fits into this channel. If you remove this cap, it is very difficult to replace this so that it gets into this channel. You have to do a series of maneuvers to put the spring first into the channel. You have to hold it in place while you're putting it back in here. But then this point here has to get into this hole exactly. If it's off slightly one way or another, you cannot maneuver it, so you have to pull it out again. You may or may not be able to appreciate this, but there are wear marks that are inside this anodized aluminum tube, and that comes from about the 50 times that I tried removing this and trying to reposition it. It is extremely difficult. The one real problem that comes from having the spring in this position, other than the fact that you can still get dirt into this mechanism and it might still cause a problem, is that this this spring can now rotate. I would imagine that if it rotates too far in one direction or another you might end up with a problem but so far it seems to be self-limiting. It either goes to one side or the other and if that happens it seems like no big deal. In order for this cap however to go back in you would probably have to shave off portions of this plastic and um, I'm sure there are a lot of people that probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, also, this particular part of the cap here will hit against this portion now where normally it doesn't. And that's going to push this down a bit because it's going to have to take up some of the space here. And that will push this down further. Now the good news is, is that if you don't want this cap, well, then this becomes a lot easier because now you've got this spring. It's obviously visible so you can see whether or not dirt is getting in it or not. It works extremely well. It's very easy to now put it into its position. What's better yet is that it's easy now to depress it and put it back in its place. So with a very simple modification, removing this thing here, which typically results in the spring coming out at the same time, but not always. Um, and rotating the spring like this, you've got yourself now a functional trowel. This will get dirt in it as you use it, but it's easy enough to shake it out and clean this, and it's highly visible. Needless to say, if you want to put things like toilet paper and stuff in here, that might be a problem unless you wrap it up in something that might be like a small Ziploc bag or something like that. In other words, you can use your imagination as to how you want to go about this. A lot of people, I think, are choosing not to put anything in here except as a last ditch measure. But again, the ease with which now this can be put back together is almost, uh, I would say, about five times easier than it was um, when it came from the factory. And that makes this now a functional instrument. This cap here also is a problem. The small um, plastic pieces here, which are supposed to be depressed in order to remove this cap, keep causing people problems. And I can understand now the design of the manufacturer as to why they did it like this. These things protrude slightly beyond the margin of the tube. 
such that when this is brought back together, these plastic pieces now press against the inner portion of this trowel and kind of provide a little bit of a friction so that it doesn't fall out real easily. It doesn't take much, however, to get it to fall out. I'm not sure that that's such a great idea because these little plastic pieces over a period of time of opening and closing will probably wear down anyway and so that friction mechanism is going to be decreased. I suggest that if you're going to be using this, then wear down these intentionally using a file or something else so that it really doesn't have any significant effect on this part, but what's even better is, is that it will be now possible without pressing a great deal on this or pressing on it at all, this cap will come off. At this point, I haven't decided what I'm going to be doing with this cap because I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be doing with the inside of this tube, but most likely I will shave these off so that now they have no, if you don't have to press in anything and you'll just simply remove this cap. It will be very simple and easy to do. Um, now this is only one of the modifications that I came up with. I had mentioned earlier the possibility of using a bolt and that's what the next portion of this video entails. These are the two additional modifications that I made. They're similar in overall approach to securing this tube to the trowel mechanism. They both involve bolts. The bolts are easy to get. They're one quarter inch by 20 thread. It's a common type you can get in any hardware store. And uh, what I did was I came up with two different types of bolts. One has a non-threaded portion that is close to the head and then it has threads for the rest of the way and the other one is threaded all the way through and I tried different designs and on one of them I cut off the bolt that had the non-threaded section for a portion of the bolt and this is what it looks like this is the second attempt the first one was a little too short it works but it's a little short I think. So I decided to try this, this second model. And this actually is not a bad design, I don't think. It, um, this is how it works. You use a piece of Velcro. This is common Velcro I found at uh, Walmart. Normally it has a small slit in the place and I enlarged it using some common scissors. These are cosmetic type scissors, but any small type scissors will do the trick for cutting this out. And the idea here is to make this large enough so that it more or less straddles the bolt head. The way it works is this. You simply bring this out. Of course now it's free sliding. It'll come out all the way if you, if you have it do that. And this shaved off bolt now goes here this portion of the strap just alights right over on the top of this thing to kind of kind of secure it it's not necessary you bring this around holding it in place with your thumb here and that's it it's not going anywhere as you can see there's still some space here within the inside so it's there's plenty of overlap this is not going anywhere um, then when you're finished, you just simply remove this, remove this, put this back, put this back, and this can then wrap around part here, bring it over here, and then tuck this into the side there, and that's it. If you have any concerns as to whether or not this will fit into the case, it will certainly do that. It, there's no, this doesn't take up much room as you might expect. Also, that's, that's modification number one. It works very well. It uh, may or may not be aesthetically pleasing to some people, but it, it does work.
Now here's the second modification. The second modification is with the thread bolts that are threaded all the way to the head. As with the previous trial run with the other bolts, the first one I made was a little on the shy side, so I made the next one slightly longer. I cut this off with a high-speed rotary tool. That's the same thing that I use for the cutting off the portion of the bolt for the other ones. And this was actually pretty easy to use. Um, when you get ready to use the trowel, you have this little bolt. You have it to where you can now bring it up through this hole here. You slide this over to where you're going to be using it so that the holes align. You push this up with your finger. There's a wing nut. Again, this is a one quarter inch by 20 thread type design, very common. And you simply uh, thread this on. Keeping in mind that this is uh, a prototype, the threads are not exactly cleaned up or anything, but it will um, it will go on. And then you just simply tighten this up. And now this is absolutely rock solid. This is not going anywhere. This is a the design I think I plan on keeping for myself. It's again easy, yes. Can you lose stuff? Yes, you surely can. But no free lunch in life, I suppose. Anyway, so to put it back into its position for, for traveling, you just remove this, slide this back over, bring this back over to the section here, put your little wing nut back on, close it up, and put it back into the case. And all is, all is well. So those are the two de design modifications I've come up with. Neither one of these or none of these modifications, including the spring relocation, uh, are authorized by the company, either the distributor or the manufacturer of Cedar Summit. So if you do any of these things, please don't go to the manufacturer and tell them that you want to have your unit replaced because you've modified it.